In this video, we're going to finish discussing some applications of Taylor series um, from section 11.10. So when we've talked about working with Taylor series, um, we've manipulated series in a couple of different ways just to remind ourselves the different things that we can do with Taylor series so far. So we've manipulated series by doing the following. We know that we can differentiate a power series term by term. Okay, we've also seen how we can integrate a power series both to create a new power series and um, in terms of using our power series representation of a function to help us take the integral of something that might otherwise be um, difficult to do. We can also do things where we um, multiply by a value or do a substitution. Okay, or substitute something for x in our series. Okay, so um, a couple additional things that we can do is we can um, divide and multiply series. So we're not going to do an example of this, but I just want to note that it is possible, for example, to find the series representation for tangent x using the series representations that we have for sine and cosine, writing out um, the series representation for sine, writing out the series representation for cosine, which we know are um, these infinitely long um, polynomial type series. So you can use polynomial long division for the, on the power series for sine divided by the power series for cosine to figure out the power series for tangent. So I just want to make sure you know that that's a um, potential way to create new series as well. So what else can we do? We can use series to evaluate limits. So that's the next thing that we want to look at. Um, here I have the limit as x goes to 0 of x minus log of 1 plus x all over x squared. I recognize that if I tried to just plug in 0 here, I would get a 0 over 0 um, indeterminate form. Okay. Now on this one, you, we probably could use L'Hopital's rule and it wouldn't be too bad, but we want to practice using series to help us evaluate this kind of limit because there are limits out there um, that would give you an indeterminate form when you would try to take the limit, and L'Hopital's rule would be um, so occasionally not helpful or just really complicated could get messy really quickly so it's good to have another tool to help us evaluate um, limits that end up with this this type so let's see how this um, application would work so I want to take this limit x and x squared are just nice polynomial terms so I'd like to be able to replace log of 1 plus x with its series representation so I could do some kind of algebraic simplification of this limit so notice that log of 1 plus x, which is equal to the sum, um, we want to try to figure out what the first couple of terms of this series look like. So notice that when n is 1, I'm going to have a positive term. I'd have x for the first term here. When n is 2, I'm going to get negative x squared over 2. When n is 3, we'll have positive x cubed over 3. Then we'll have minus x to the 4th over 4, plus x to the 5th over 5, etc. So looking at our limit, I can rewrite this limit as x goes to 0 of x minus log of 1 plus x all over x squared as a limit as x goes to 0 of x minus, and then I'll replace log of 1 plus x with its series representation, but I'll write it in this this form where I have the terms written out so I can see more easily what I'm actually dealing with. So I have x minus x squared plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 plus x to the 5th over 5. And we'll just write that with a plus dot 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 to remind ourselves it does keep going on there. And then this is divided by x squared. So notice if I um, distribute this negative sign through, we have a limit as x goes to 0 of x minus x, so we're going to get rid of that x term, and then we'll have positive x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3, positive x to the 4th over 4 minus x to the 5th over 5, 
etc. And this is all divided by x squared. Okay, so since I have a single denominator here, I can divide each term in my numerator by x squared. So I have this limit as x goes to 0. x squared over 2 divided by x squared, that's going to be 1 half. I'll have minus x over 3 plus x squared over 4 minus x to the, um, let's see, this is going to be um, x here. Okay, minus x over 3 um, plus x squared over 4 minus x cubed over 5. Okay, and that'll keep going. So we're reducing the power in the numerator by 2 since I'm dividing by this x squared. Now I can see that all of the terms, because we know that these powers of x are going to keep increasing here, all of the terms from x over 3 are going to go to 0. Okay, so if I plug in 0 into this, everything will be 0 except for that first term. So I can see that this limit will be equal to 1 half. Okay, so you want to keep this tool of being able to replace a function with, a, um, with its Taylor series expansion um, as being a helpful tool for computing limits in many cases. Okay, so there's just one more um, application here that I want to mention. And that's that we can also use power series um, to help us find the sum of a series if we can recognize it as being um, the same as a, a power series we're familiar with. So notice here I have this sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, pi to the 2n plus 1, all over 4 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So when I look at this, I notice that I have both this pi and this 4 raised to the same power. So I could rewrite that sum as negative 1 to the n pi over 4 to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay, And this sort of form that we see here should remind you of something that we've seen before. So if you had that table of common series in front of you, you would see on it that we have the sum from negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial is equal to Maclaurin series for our sine function. Okay, The one where we have just even powers of 2n and 2n factorial is equal to our cosine function. So I notice that this um, sum here, which is just the sum of numbers, is exactly our Maclaurin series for sine, where x is replaced with pi force. So we can recognize that this series is actually equal to sine of pi force, which means the value of that series is root 2 over 2. Okay. Again, you're not required to memorize these series, but if you had that list of series in front of you for, for some um, common Taylor series, you could recognize that what we're given here is one of those common types, in particular it turns out to be the sine one, where x is replaced by pi force. Okay, so now we know the exact value of that sum, root 2 over 2, is equal to that infinite sum. Here's just one other example. I have a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3 to the n over 5 to the n, n factorial. Notice that I can write this as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3 over 5 to the n over n factorial. And we can recall that this is similar to something that we've seen before. Um, we know that the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial is our Maclaurin series for e to the x. So I notice that this is the Maclaurin series where x is replaced by 3 fifths. So the value of that infinite series is e to the 3 fifths. So I guess this gives you a few more um, applications of how we can use Taylor series in various problems.